Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. And here we are for part two of watching Chris make candles. And this video is going to be the actual pouring process. So this is the station on where we have all of our digiboils. So these digiboils are our large wax melt holders that hold all of our uh, waxes. So the two waxes that are on right now is soy 10, which is the wax on the left. And then there's beeswax, which is the wax in the middle. So as you can see, they're both set to 177 degrees. But the way that these work is that it actually gets much hotter inside than it does the temperature that you set it at. So you just have to keep checking it. Now, what Chris is doing right now is he is taking a heat gun and he is heating up the spout of the beeswax. So that little picture right there is what we call just a little catch-all. And that's just to catch the beeswax um, once we melt it because working with beeswax is kind of a pain in the butt because it has such a high melt point. So it tends to clog up that little spout all the time and we just have to make sure that we are unclogging it um, a lot of times throughout the candle making process but it really just depends on how quickly we are pouring candles now Chris pours candles pretty quickly, so most of the time um, we don't have to do it that often in between pours because it's hot enough and stays hot enough um, once uh, the wax has actually gone through the spout. Hi, it's me just interrupting this video to let you know that if you are somebody who is wanting to get started with your own candle business, but you're confused and intimidated by the shipping process, I do have an entire course on this topic called Mastering Shipping that teaches you exactly how to choose your boxes, determine the best and cheapest shipping method for each unique order, and how to set shipping prices that won't scare your customer away or make you lose out on profits. If this is something you're struggling with, I will have a link to the course in the description box below. Now, what Chris is doing now is actually checking the level of the table. He is much more, um, I don't know what to call it, but he's very particular about the entire process of making candles. He's very, very precise, very particular, um, and he likes to make sure that everything is going to be as perfect as possible when it comes to pouring candles. So that white table right there is, again, a table that we got from Ikea, and um, it is the flattest, most sturdiest table that we have. It used to be the shipping table when we had everything set up in the living room. And then when we brought it into the candle room, um, it actually was used as a desk, so the computer area. But then Chris realized that it probably would be a really good pouring table. And we're able to fit quite a lot of candles in one area. And again, the reason why we're actually able to pour that many candles at once is because of the piston funnel that is used. So you'll see that in just a moment, him using the piston funnel. But the process of actually making the candles involves a lot of uh, temperature control. So just making sure that everything is heated up to the right temperature and making sure that we have the fragrance oil binding with the wax at the right temperature and also making sure that we are heating up the pouring pitcher and uh, making sure that that is a warm or hot temperature so that it's not going to drastically cool down the wax once it hits the pitcher. You wanna make sure that you're kind of matching or closely matching that temperature because again, as I've mentioned before in the past, temperature control is a huge part of the candle making process and a really important part of the candle making process. So that little um, piston funnel that you're seeing him use, that is something that gets transferred immediately from the pitcher. So we have the actual pouring pitcher, which you can pour candles using that pouring pitcher, but using this piston funnel allows you to have a lot more control. You're able to pour in a more upright position versus using the regular pitcher to pour, and there's a lot of liquid in there, and you're trying to kind of pour it over and you just don't have as much control over um, how much of the wax is being poured out and it does get really heavy and it just you just don't have as much control over the piston funnel um, because you're able to kind of utilize your thumb and really um, when you press it down it releases and allows you to have the wax come out and then once you uh, 
uh, take the thumb off, then it just closes it at the bottom and it really just kind of makes it to where you have a lot more control. Now, what he just showed you uh, up close, these are the little measuring devices that we use and that's just in lieu of having to place each candle on a scale and get that 10 ounces on the scale when we are pouring. This device allows us to know where to stop pouring that gives us that 10 ounces. Um, these are something that we got from an Etsy shop that I will have a link down below and a pinned comment for you to check out. Um, it's an Etsy shop, again, I've been talking about for so long. I mentioned it in the last video and I've talked about it in a lot of other videos before. He just has these 3D printed um, products. That's where we get all of the uh, wick holders and um, different devices and stuff that we use. And it just sits on the edge of the wick holder and then um, he's just kind of looking down and seeing where it is stopping. And what uh, we did with this is that um, it was actually a little bit longer. The device was actually a little bit longer. And what I did was I measured out one candle and then uh, we cut it uh, a little bit longer than where it actually needed to end because what Chris and I like to do when pouring candles is we will under pour a little or yeah we will under pour a little bit and then go through and add in little bit by little bit on each of the candles to make sure that we are um, leveling and evening them out as much as possible and again with the candle formulas that I have uh, created for these candles I always add in a few grams onto each formula to um, make sure that all of the candles are at least 10 ounces. Some of them could be a little bit more than 10 ounces, but I would rather them be a little bit more than 10 ounces than a little bit under 10 ounces because when you are selling a product, you wanna make sure that the net weight is what the net weight is. You don't wanna say that a candle has a net weight of 10 ounces and then have it only be 9.7 ounces or whatever it is. You know, you definitely don't wanna do that. That would be um, under pouring and having a product that is not accurate to what you are selling it as. And we wanna make sure that we are making everything as accurate as possible. And I know that within the candle making process, it can be a little bit difficult um, to, try to make everything exact and even and perfect. And trust me, Chris tries uh, and he does a really good job and he does way better than I ever did when it comes to making these products as perfect as possible. I mean, you saw him break out that leveler. I mean, he really wants to make sure that these candles are leveled on the pouring surface. Um, and that was just something that I, uh, didn't really think as much about when I would pour candles and I would pour candles on tables that were definitely not leveled at all and you could definitely see it. But there are different things that you can do to try to make your products as um, quote unquote perfect as possible. I don't even like to use the word perfect, but you know what I mean. Um, making it to where it looks as professional as possible, um, especially when it comes to labeling the candles and putting on the um, candle labels to where they're not crooked and pouring on tables that are more even so that the wax is more even um, and just kind of utilizing different things like that to make sure that you are trying to create the best looking product as possible. Also double checking to make sure that there's no little um, like fuzzies or hairs or anything getting inside of your wax. Um, that's definitely really important to check on as well because of course we're human and things happen. Um, but for the most part, uh, luckily we don't have to worry about that too much. Um, but there are times where you'll notice something that has gotten in the wax and you have to kind of fish it out. Um, and that's definitely something that you have to be on the lookout for when pouring candles, especially when you're pouring a lot of candles at once. Um, there's a lot of parts of the candle making process that you can really take your time and do quality control. Um, quality control can really come in at all different parts of the candle making process, not just the packaging process, which is definitely the final stage 
of quality control before you're shipping out that candle. And the main things that we always check for before shipping out a candle is, uh, well, one, I, whenever I would ship out a candle, I would always smell the candle. And I don't know if this is just something that I would do. Um, I don't know if Chris does this. I can't remember, but I don't know if this was just a habit of mine, but whatever candle is sold, I would always just pop off the lid and smell it. And I think that was just kind of one of the things of like, just being able to smell a candle. But I also think it was kind of one of those things where I would just double check to make sure that the right label was on the right product. Um, so I would check the um, scent, check to make sure that there was nothing on the top of the candle, um, like hairs or, or anything that got on the candle or something like that. Um, and then I would turn the candle upside down and make sure that there was a warning label because um, you definitely wanna make sure that your candles have warning labels. So those were the things that I always will check when shipping out a candle and that's the final process of the quality control. But during this process, there are definitely things that you can do to make sure that you are um, getting the best product and giving out the best product product that you can and that is just paying attention to the candle making formula so that you know in our instance just making sure that we're adding the adequate amount of soy tin and beeswax and fragrance oil together for the candle that we are making um, and then as well as making sure that the wicks are straight centered and taut so just making sure that they are tight and not loose in there because we want to make sure that the candle is going to burn as easily evenly as possible down um, throughout the candle and that the candle wick is not going to be kind of, you know, wonky halfway down. Um, and then also with the closed pins as well. When it's a single wick like this, um, you can really, just like what he's doing right now, just kind of going through and making sure that all of the wicks are as centered as possible. And it can be kind of challenging to figure out exactly where the center is. But if you can get within like, you know, half a centimeter of what the center is or something like that, I mean, it's close enough to where the candle can still burn pretty evenly and pretty um, normally. Um, now, if the wick is really, really off center, then it's not going to burn properly. Um, but if you get pretty close to the middle, I mean, that can be usually as best as you can get it. Um, but being able to have the candle uh, be as straight as possible and down the center as much as possible is again a first part of the quality control of the candle making process. But um, when you're pouring candles like that, especially when it's a clear jar, a lot of times uh, you're gonna be kind of looking more at eye level to see where that fill line is. So unlike the matte black Cali jars and even the clear Cali jars, those jars don't come with a fill line. So with those, you kind of do have to be able to have a um, something that you can put on the side to know when to stop where the fill level is. But with the clear seven ounce straight sided jars, those are something to where those actually have a fill line to it. So that is just basically, you know, trying to fill it to that fill line. And we don't actually have to have something hanging on the edge of the jar in order to know where to stop. So there's all different kinds of jars and they all will require either something to have on the side to where you know where to stop or the jar will actually have a fill line to it. Um, the seven ounce jars, I mean, they're, I guess they're nine ounce jars, but the seven ounce candles, they're awesome to make because of the fact that, you know, they have that fill line. We don't have to have anything hanging on the side. Um, so this is the whole process of just kind of having the wax heated to that temperature, pouring in the soy tin, the fragrance oil, the adequate amount of beeswax, and then pouring that into the piston funnel to be able to transfer it over to the candle jar. So I really hope you enjoyed watching Chris make these candles on this table. Again, this was for some wholesale orders. And as you can see, he was just fishing something out there. Just like I was saying, sometimes you find something that you just need to get out real fast of the candles. So with that, um, I will see you in the next video, which will be part three to this video series of watching Chris make all of these candles.